Podcast. All right. So hi everyone. Today I invited one of my guests. It's one of my best friend as well. Their name called Felix. Welcome, Felix. Hi, hi, hi. I'm Felix uh, Atley, um, and I'm here today with Ellie. Oh, thank you so much for joining our podcast. It was so lovely to meet you, and I'm. Really keen on to hear your story, really. So, just recap what sort of projects I'm doing this year. So, this year I sort of going to invite twelve guests and just based on their story, based on like um their objects they bring to me and share, um, what why is really meaning to them and what's make them been changed or improved and really just based on their story, and go through from the podcast. I going to. Based on the message from it, and I will recreate their story and my idea with it, and paint it again as a corporation. So yeah, I saw you have a little lovely buddy with you. Yeah, it's so cute. So <laughs> what you bringing for me then? So this is baby. Oh,、um, baby! Because、Hello. I was a very imaginative child,、uh, and named my doll baby. <laughs> So,、uh, baby is I for, for for those who can't see him because you're on you're recorded. He's a、uh, red-headed doll. You know, he's about thirty centimeters tall,、um, wearing black, blue, and white striped dungarees.、Aww. And、um, he's very special to me because my mother made him for me when I was about two, two, two or three.、Um, and it's particularly a、uh, my pow no, it's a powerful thing for me because. She had a doll almost identical to this one, when she was a little girl, and、uh, because I was a cantankerous child, I at one point was given her doll, and very nearly destroyed it by hugging it and、oh. loving it too much. Um. So to save her childhood memento, she made one almost identical because I I was picky. Um. Oh, and uh, to replace it with, and、uh, you can't really see it. Because it's a podcast, but he's very, very well loved. He's sort of at one point his head might have been ripped off and stitched back on, and his legs as well. So he's he's a very, very well loved doll. And I mean, even his hair, like his fringe. At one point, I I cut shorter because I、Aww. was trying to learn how to be a hairdresser. Um, you know what, what for? I, I love it. <laughs> so、Aww. yeah, um, and he's he's a very important you know part of my life. Uh. Everywhere I go, he's you know in my house with me, and、um, you know very well loved and、uh, you know sort of a very powerful totem of you know life and childhood. I、Aww. suppose it's really lovely to see babies, and also I'm sure babies been bring you a lot of joys and memory as well. Would you mind to tell me like some memories when you with babies in the past? Um. Yeah. Absolutely. So I mean, like you know, as I said, he's like the childhood toy, comfort toy, really.、Mm. Um. And I took him everywhere. Uh, wow. Like absolutely everywhere. Sort of, or every everywhere I went. You know, in a lot of my childhood photos, there's always he's always there. Sort of, I'm holding his hand normally. This is why his one of his arms has been ripped off. Um. <laughs> sort of like dragging him around with me. Um. And so because uh we I I grew up in. Uh, Botswana and South Africa until I was seven, so he was always there with me. That was like when you know until I was seven, he was there nearly all the time, and and still later. But that was sort of you know the most I was with him. And、um, just thinking about time when I was there, well, that's a good time. Well, I suppose when I gave him a haircut is a really good memory.、Uh, <laughs> so that was when we were in Londodno in Cape Town. Yeah. And.、Uh, Uh, my little sister, no, it wasn't my little sister. It was one of my friend's little sisters because my little sister wouldn't have been born yet.、Um, had one of those Barbie dolls with the hair that you could sort of roll out,、oh. so you could you could cut the hair on the Barbie doll, and then you could sort of wind it back, and you would have another head of hair on the Barbie. It was a sort of you know thing, and you could do the makeup on it.、Oh, and I was、so cool. incredibly jealous. I can't tell you how jealous I was of this. It was incredibly unfair that I didn't have one, 
and my mother wouldn't buy me one and she, you know you've already got toys it's all fine you don't need anything anyway so I was not it was not spiteful I was just like well I can give my doll a haircut so I, I, I gave baby a haircut and a very very nice <laughs> very short fringe was the haircut that he got um, you know. I mean, it's very artistic. Also, it's very unique as well. It's pretty I pretty. I also gave his, his little bit of a <laughs> chocolate at the back as well. But yeah, I mean, yeah, he's uh, he's definitely definitely hasn't grown back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, baby definitely been give you lots of different memories. Yes. Um, actually. Can I able to maybe ask you another questions then based on babies maybe? Absolutely. Um, what is the most important things that you have learned in your life, and what was your life like before learning it? What was your life like after learning it? Is there a difference from it? You know. The most important thing I've learned. Um, it's quite a difficult question because you know. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a it's a it's a it's tricky, but. Uh, most I think the most um the th important thing I've ever learned is sort of how to accept who you are, well who I am, um, because I'm I'm queer, uh, uh non-binary. Sort of never enti not entirely sure who I want to be, any day of the week really, let alone in the future. Um, and I, that you know, made my childhood quite difficult at times and I you know I had fights with my parents about it um which they had yeah they get on very well about it now it's all sort of fine but excuse me but yeah I think that was a, a lesson that I learned relatively recently I think you know you just need to acknowledge who you are uh and you can't hide that you know you've got to accept it and because when you do that, you can be happy. Yeah, that's. And uh, yeah. I, a lot of you know, I was quite depressed as a kid. Yeah, you know, as a kid, as a teenager, I I suffered from depression and anxiety. I still do, of course. Everyone does, not everyone, but some people do. Um, yeah. Uh, I think the thing that I learnt that that was yeah how to accept who you are. And then what changed is that I did accept who I was and I'm incredibly happy for it. And, you know, everything makes much more sense, I suppose. Um, yeah. That's really beautiful. I mean, I'm so proud of you. You've been like sharing like how, who you are and, you know, the change. I'm, I can like imagine how difficult it was in the past, like if you... You know, your mom been making babies for you. You sort of like having a really strong bonding with your parents, mm. and you know, in some point, like they're not really understand, or you know, they have a fight with you. It's it's definitely not easy, you know. No, it's it's not, but yeah. it's um, I think it's a part of growing up as well as fighting with your family. <laughs> in many ways, uh, I think some people do it more than others, but um, yeah, yeah definitely for me, that was a certainly a part of part of growing up and we are much better off for it now though i think i'm glad i mean i mean that's mean a lot like when you're sharing like your ideas as well because you know i'm pansexual as well so like in some way that like i was in the past i was been hiding myself a little bit i didn't really want to share like what if like i telling people about mm. how i've been or how i feel and you know people will sort of say that Oh, so what is your like gender and stuff like you know some people sort of having judging eyes on you a little bit and also you know it's difficult to really suddenly tell your parents as well as in my family they're quite traditional mm. but you know in some way that like I think you inspire me as well like to to show and tell yourself that who you are really I think this is really important to just express your feeling and tell who you are and also because i got depression as well like it's definitely difficult and i will if you don't mind like can you tell me about how you've been going through from your depressions and stuff if you know yeah, if actually, I, I, I can talk about that um thank you uh so i am a person who suffers from periodic depressive episodes anyway um 
which can be triggered by lots of things and sometimes just happen without seemingly without reason. Uh, but definitely there are some things that make it worse and some things that make it better. You know, and all the stuff that people tell you, you know, do exercise and go outside, that also that all is relevant and works. Um, I suppose the first time, like now looking back at my life, that I acknowledge having like serious depression was when I was 16 um, and until that point like I think I was probably fairly stable in that respect although I can't really remember to honestly can't remember I probably was a moody little child yeah. Um, but yeah uh, so I uh, just was completely miserable actually and I I mean there are years of my early like my early teen early to late to late teens that I don't really remember because I just didn't function at all. Yeah. Um, and I sort of passed through, you know, the A-levels and GCSEs and sort of a haze of not really knowing what's going on. Um, and periodically going out and finding some friends to have a party with and then, you know, ignoring my parents. running Basically, I hid from home, you know. I, I ran, or not, didn't run away from home. But I didn't spend any time at home. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I I didn't really know what I went. I did a foundation after leaving art school, uh, after leaving secondary school, fa fa college, that's the word. Uh, so I did a foundation after leaving college, which I completely failed to do anything with. I just scraped past, and that was only because I... Um, had someone who sort of dragged me along to go to the exams and stuff because I didn't do anything. Um, and then I, I, I just basically, I spent probably seven years kind of just going like, you know, for, but just doing what someone told me to do because I had to do something, I couldn't get anywhere, but never being diagnosed as depressed, not knowing even that that was a thing that people could really have. Yeah. Um, and eventually, uh, when was it? So then uh, I, part of all of that was eventually I became a chef to make some money. And I was working, I, I moved to London with a friend who was not a particularly good influence on me. <laughs> and uh, I, yeah, I, I worked in London for six or seven, eight years. Uh, yeah, eight, must have been about seven years. Um, as it just like got a job and just went to work, came back, got drunk, went to work, came, got back, mm. came, got drunk. So, so basically every day. Um, and then had an enormous breakdown. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I quit my job in a fit of anger and sort of ended up going home to where my parents lived. And I got home and sort of completely collapsed. Um, to the point that my mum was absolutely terrified, called the doctor, took me to the doctor and was like, he's depressed, fix him. Um, and I got some help from the doctor, which was very helpful at the time, uh, because the NHS at that point in Cornwall had a, a thing called... I can't remember the name of the organisation was, which is closed down now, which is a real shame. It used to be really helpful for people who mm. needed help. Uh, they used to get you um, psychiatrists and... Uh, it was really quite helpful. Uh, <laughs> there were sort of meetings and talks and you went to, you know, yeah. lectures and stuff. Um, not lectures, you sort of went to help like groups. sessions and stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they've actually closed the Cornish Division now, which is really quite crap. Um, but, yeah, so I, I, I went through quite a long course of antidepressants and anti-anxieties and uh, basically everything. <laughs> yeah. All of the drugs that they can give you. And I was pretty dosed up on antidepressants for about six months before they let me start coming off them um and uh so, i mean that that wasn't that wasn't the solution because i wasn't i didn't change anything about my life yeah um and yeah i mean this is a bit sad really uh, you know i was i was i took it took me probably three or four more years to sort of work out what the hell i was doing and fix the way that I was living 
to the yeah. extent that I wasn't in a place where I was just continually going up and down. Yeah. Um, then, you know, fi- fi- fixing myself, being like, oh, it's okay now, I'm, I'm fine. And then just falling back into the same habits, uh, going and hanging out with the same people and just ending up being depressed, you know, being depressed again. And a lot of that, you know, it, it was not great. But um, the thing that always kept me sane was making art. And over the last uh, five, six years, that's really become the focus of my life. Mm-hmm. And through that, I have managed to well, create a stable mental health situation. I, mean, I still have peaks and troughs and ups and downs and yeah. swings and roundabouts. But that's, that's, yeah, that's how I kind of keep myself alive. Uh, oh. being frankly honest um, but yeah oh, I, I mean I want to give you a hug you can even, give me a hug even like a fur as well I just want to give you a hug thank you so much for sharing that it's, it's I mean it might be like a lot for you and you know it's I mean it's where we cry a little bit so it's that's, that's you know you ask questions and no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's but, why I'm holding baby oh yeah baby's else beside you so I'm sure like baby probably heal you a little bit as well oh smell lovely isn't it It smells mostly of musty musty dusty dolls (laughs) it's full of sawdust so he's like (laughs) sawdust and cotton wool so i realized that when you say that like um after like you've been processed a lot lately Mm. you've been doing art yes so i just wondering like jump through from Yes. Art as well. Like, I was, I was like thinking. Oh, actually, what makes you feel inspired or like your best self? Like you know, in maybe art, maybe in some way guide you through something differently, or maybe inspire something that helps. Yes. You um. I mean, certainly initially, the thing that got me going was painting. Um, was painting. Mm. Uh, and uh, painting in particular seascapes. Because I just would just go and sit on the cliffs uh, in Boss Castle and paint the sea. And I did that continuously for quite a long time during my mental health recovery. Yeah. And it became quite an obsessive thing. I painted a lot of seascapes. Um, <laughs> a lot, lot of seascapes. Uh, uh, yeah, and um, but like it's become more than just a painting now. My, like, artistic creation is an amazing thing. Like artistic creation is incredible. And I, I find an immense amount of joy in just making things even if they're not you know, purposeful yeah. just just doing things with your hand and mind that create and express like yeah, sort of like your, exactly. your feeling just and is there talent also it's really pretty like yeah oh actually before i say anything i feel like felix need to share your instagram account as well if you don't mind like yeah that's fine i can do that i'm not entirely you, sure how can you just say that like your account name maybe uh, yes so absolutely. people can actually sort of follow your instagram um, as well because... it would be uh felix gillespie atsley art and that would be so f-e-l-i-x g-i-l-l-e-s-p-i-e a-t-t-l-e-e art lovely thank you i mean like there what was been so lovely i mean it's been inspiring me a lot. It's really like Thank the you. painting and sculpture, the color that you've been using was fantastic. And you know, I'm sure like it can help lots of people and healing a lot of people as well. Um, I just thinking like, am I going to be last but not least, I just thinking maybe you could say or telling some of us like, uh, something that like, how to maybe support or maybe yourself or you know chill uh cheers of like everyone a little bit from some message at the end maybe inspirational things to cheer people up uh and um i don't know this is uh things to good messages well the first thing is as i said you've got to accept who you are um mm-hmm. because that is the only way that you can deal with anything that's going on in your head if you refuse to accept who you are then you, you, that that it, that makes everything incredibly diff- difficult for yourself uh, because the human psyche doesn't like things to be ignored and it tends to make you go mad um, something that uh, there's a poem called Inviticus uh, which is a very famous poem so quite a lot of people might have already heard it but um, 
there's a the, the last uh, paragraph, the last bit of it yeah. is a, it go, it goes um, it matters not how ah uh, how it matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul, and I think that's a good poem uh, for anyone who struggles sometimes with all the crap that goes on in life. Yeah. Because it's got a very strong message about self guidance and love, and if that isn't the right thing, then the only other thing I can tell you is to wear sunscreen. <laughs> um, <laughs> fantastic uh, because yeah, that's, that's so true as well yeah. and to look after your teeth because if you're miserable and uh, you don't look after your teeth those are the ones that you can't replace and tooth dental work is very expensive <laughs> and very painful that is so, so true so if there's anything you do when you're in a depressed huge brush your teeth mm. um, because that's something that I didn't do and I have several fillings and they were very painful and I didn't like them <laughs> I mean, I, I can imagine that's going to be quite hard, isn't it? It's not fun. Um, no, I yeah, mean, thank you for sharing that experience. That is really important to like let people know that like make sure to love yourself. It's like self love to love your teeth and everything. It's so yeah. important. You know, there are things yeah. that, you know there are things in life that you can only have two sets of and teeth of one of them, and you lose your first set very young. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, love yourself is always a thing that you can say to people, but sometimes people refuse to listen to it. You can't hear it. It doesn't. It doesn't work. Um, but if you can at least look after parts of your body, do one thing. You know, brush your teeth. It's one thing you've done every day. Yeah. If you do that, you know, it just uh, choose one thing, and if you can do one thing, you should be proud of yourself. Yeah. I mean, thank you so much for sharing like your lovely story and you invited babies as well as a little partner in these sections and it's lovely. Um, just try to sum up like everything we've been trying to say. Like I think the main key points that I've been learned today is sort of self love. If you can't find it, brush your teeth. So it's sort of like you're sort of focusing on something if you're in depression on anything. Mm. Although, like, brush your teeth is, like, a routine. But, you know, I think, like, s- lately, like, people sort of, like, in pressure a lot. And, you know, this, they might forget. And, like, that is quite important. So I think maybe somehow just slow down a little bit and try to focus on one thing instead of, like, multiple things. That yeah. is sort of the same things that I've been learning from what Felix just been told. It's, like, a reflection from brush your teeth but sort of thing that you just focus on one thing for example i love cats so i'm feeding my cats every single day it's like a routine yeah, it's find, like a mission find one thing you can do and gives you enjoyment and if routines are much easier to keep yeah um if there's something that you do every day because it's something you do every day then you do it every day uh and that makes it easy to do it and although it's a routine and you're just going to the motions yeah you do get through your life and through that you can find something else to bring you joy yeah yeah for sure and i think really talk to someone is always yeah, good as absolutely well. I, I mean i wouldn't have i wouldn't have got out of the place where i was without intervention from from family and i think family might not always be the person who can give you that intervention but if someone tries to help if someone reaches out to you take their hand because yeah it's almost it's very tricky sometimes to pull yourself out of yeah. especially if you haven't experienced it before depression is absolutely horrible yeah. um it's a really serious thing and um yeah sometimes it's incredibly difficult to work out how you'd even begin to feel sane because you can't even recognize it especially if you don't know what you're looking for you don't really know what's wrong yeah you just sort of live through a haze of absolute misery uh, without even really recognising it as misery the first few times anyway for me personal experience um, yeah. everyone experiences everything differently but yeah if someone reaches out to grant to help you take their hand because it may, it may well yeah. help you a lot so just you're not alone for yes. my experience as well it's just like uh people love you people love you i love you whoever you are yeah like, i you love know. you guys too yeah <laughs> it is lovely so okay i think it's going to 
go at the end very soon but i want to just say thank you so much felix being such a lovely person being my first guest being a lovely artist being my best friend being my soulmate and being a lovely artist in farm of university as well and yeah i think that's it and i will see you guys very soon thank you thank you bye, bye.